my wife asked me to put a clock into our ensuite. The only place I had available was on the wall opposite the mirror, and after I did so, I realised that the clock read in reverse when he looked in the mirror. To be able to read it properly, I had to turn around, look at the clock and turn back again. And I thought, what about if I make a backward clock? With a backwards clock, we could then look in the mirror and read the clock directly. Hi, I'm Terry. I bought two of these clocks from Kmart. $3 each. You see, this one still looks an original packaging. I wanted some cheap clocks that I could play with, so I checked out the website and I found that Kmart sold a, a cheap wall clock for $3 and also IKEA sold an almost identical one for $2.95. Here's how I did it. I researched the web, found out that it could be done, and then headed down to Kmart and bought two of these clocks because I fully expected to break one of them. First of all, peel the wrapper off it. The first and the most important step is to take a battery and test the clock to make sure it works. No point in doing all the work if it doesn't go. You hear it? She's underway. Take the battery out and then we can start work on it. Let's now take the plastic cover off, what you call the, the glass. Flip the clock over and you can see underneath here two little sections, this little bit here and this little section over here, both little ears and they'll need to be pushed in and then we can lever the, the whole cover off. I used two small jeweler screwdrivers, one will push underneath and just bend it back a little bit and the other one I'll use to push it down once I've levered it out. Once you've lifted them both out then it's just a matter of taking your jeweler screwdriver and push the the cover out so it starts to go. It might need a little bit of working on both sides and eventually there it goes, popped off. Set the cover aside, we'll be using it later. Next job is to remove the hands. These just pull straight off. There we are, the hands are off. Set them aside I'm actually working on a microfiber cloth. I can put some stuff down and it won't slide off accidentally if I touch it. Now we'll turn the clock over and we'll remove the mechanism. We can do it. There's a, a lug at the top, lug at the bottom. It's just a matter of levering it back. And there you go, it's starting to come out now. There we go, there's our mechanism has come out. It's very easy. Set the clock aside. We'll be using that later. Turn the mechanism over. On the back, you'll see the knob for adjusting the time. We'll need to remove that. It's only a matter of prise it off. Fingernails underneath. Give it a tug and off it comes. This one's a little bit tight. So we'll go underneath it with a couple of screwdrivers and we'll just lever it off. There we go. Now leave it off. And we'll set that one to one side. The clock mechanism shaft protrudes from the base, so we're going to need to protect that. So I like to take a, a roll of masking tape or something like that that I can actually put down and then I can rest the clock mechanism on it. And so when I'm working on it, it won't actually damage or push on the mechanism. To open up the mechanism, we've got one little catch on this side, another catch on the other side, and some of them have another catch down the bottom to be able to do it. So let's now prise it apart. You know what, we've moved it a little bit, very carefully, turn it around, do the same on the other side. Just prise it gently. There it is, and now it's ready to pop off. And so we'll just lift it up, and here's our mechanism inside. I'll rotate it around, and I'll show you close up what happens inside here. I right, now like to get hold of my digital camera and take a photograph. That way, I can look at it a little bit later on. Now we find one of the problems that modellers have. Here's a close-up of the mechanism. <coughs> We're going to remove two cogs and the little motor wheel. We'll lift out the right-hand one. 
then we'll lift out the left hand one and the small one right in the center there that's the crankshaft we'll be lifting that one out as well they'll just lift straight out I'm going to use a pair of tweezers and just lift them out so the first one off put that to one side we won't bump it and then we'll take the second one out just lift it straight out place it to one side and the little motor shaft will take this one out as well if we look closely at the motor shaft this has got the little magnet on it I originally tried with this little magnet to reverse that but it didn't work here's that little motor shaft we're left now with the solenoid coil and the armature shaft and the electronics are underneath what we're going to do now is lift out that armature it's got one little catch here that we need to release it from and another one little down, down the bottom that we'll slide it out from here we go let's lever it out right just lifting it out now here it comes it's ready to come and we'll slide it forward so we can get it out turn it around so we can get into it and then slide forward there and it's free this is the second clock that I'm doing for this YouTube video the first one's actually up in service and this mechanism is a little bit different on my first one I could lift this one out this one here is holding in fairly well so instead of taking it out I'll just lift it up and I'll slide the two armature sections out you see how that's coming out we'll slide them out very carefully and then we need to reverse it upside down and slide it back in again be careful we don't damage any of the electronics there we go sliding back in again there it is right down in slide it back into its locating lugs right there we are and just fold it down and this one here I've actually broken the little piece of plastic on there so I'll get a little tiny bit of tape and I'll put over to hold it right I've got the tape first thing I'll do I'll take that little black lug off that I broke oops it just popped off anyway and we'll have a bit of tape I'll cut the tape down to size and I'll apply it like that that's in and that will hold it now it's a matter of reassemble the whole lot so we go back to first of all the motor armature put the motor, jump, motor armature in have the next cog the left hand one slide it down in yeah that's in place then I'll have the next one the right hand one slide that one down in place there we go and now it's a matter of reassembling the back we've got everything in in place let's put the back cover on and gently slide her in there she clipped and clipped so it's in now I'll have the time adjuster put that one down in lock it in and now very important to test it to make sure it works so we'll take a, a second hand put it onto it insert the battery and see if we have any luck and here it is here's your clock mechanism going backwards so take the battery out again second hand off and we can now start on the next section which is doing the clock face itself here's our clock face we're going to want a mirror image of this and it's hard to get this one here off because it's actually glued on you can see the bit of glue inside there and it's actually a, a paperized or a plasticized cardboard in there so what I did instead I decided to sacrifice the clock and I've cut it out and got my Dremel and I've actually cut all the way around through here so I could pop it out other alternatives you can actually measure across over here and then with a texture color you can do them by hand you can have a sheet of paper that you can turn around and put some letter set on for yourself 
or uh, some stick-on letters you can get from the local hobby shops or from craft centres but I wanted to scan mine, put it on the scanner and, uh, and scan the thing and then do a flip image on the scanner and then print it off on photographic paper. I've now cut right through it with a Dremel just from out of pulling it apart. You can discard this section, you can throw that out and here's the, the flat clock face now that I can put onto the scanner itself and I can scan it and get a uh, an image that I can manipulate. Well I've scanned the image I've opened it up in Irfan View which is a really good little photo editing program, totally free got no malware or anything with it so it's something I'm using all the time and we need just to go to image and we'll come down to horizontal flip clip that and here's our uh, our backwards clock brought up. Now it's only a matter of printing it off. So we've got a file and this is the important part here. Come down to print and it comes up with defaulted over here. I'm just having a look to find it. It's best fit to page. You don't want that. You need to go up to original size and then it's just a matter of go down and print it off. I like to print it first on plain paper and, if that, and then just size it up on the clock face and if it's a good size then I'll then print it off on the photo paper. Okay we've we'll printed it off. Let's check it for size. Just put it over the original one and I can see there that it's the exact fit. The next job is to cut it out. Pair of scissors Just cut it around the edge. Here we are, just about there. Finished. And there's our mirror image clock face. I have some leather hollow punch sets, for, and I've used those to cut the hole in the centre of the the clock face. You now need to disassemble your second clock, just to the point of a clock face like that. Then take the clock face that you printed on your photo paper and we're going to glue it on the top. And so I like to use power print. This is what I'm using at the moment. But you can use any good paper glue. And take it off. Run the glue around several times on that. And then glue the face on. And I'll turn my light on it and I can hold it up and I can actually line the numbers up inside. So there it's lined up and I'll push it down and I'll just wait for that to dry. I'll have about 30 minutes for it to dry and then we can reassemble the mechanism. Align the clock so the hole for hanging it to the top. Take your mechanism, the battery case downwards and we'll fit it in with the, the bottom first. Then slide it forward until it clips in. It clipped in, that's got it now it's ready to be turned over and we'll put the hands on. I want to put the hour hand on first, the small one. Line it up exactly with one of the hours. Here we go. Then take the hour hand, line it up exactly with the 12. And just press fit it on. And the second hand, take it and push it down, lining up exactly with the 12 as well. There we go, that's down and that's on. Now it's a matter of just pop the cover back on. Here's the cover. Remember we've got the two little hooks there on the sides and poke it in there and press it down until it clips. Now put the battery back in. And there we go, there's your reverse clock going backwards. Here's our reverse clock operating and when we turn it around and look at it in the mirror there it is in the mirror looking the right way around. Well there it is for an outlay of about six dollars and an afternoon of having fun you too can have a silly project like making yourself a backward clock. Enjoy yourself. <laughs>